In this episode, the Greenwood Military Aviation Museum, located at CFB Greenwood in Nova Scotia, Canada. And this will give you a good idea of what the air park and the museum looks like from Google Earth. The museum building is made up of two parts. One with, houses most of the artifacts and then the newer part of which holds several aircraft. As you enter the museum grounds, the gatekeeper of the Argus and an airman from World War II will greet you on your way into the museum. And this guy is overlooking the collection and keeps an eye on what is going on around the museum. Just the same as he did during World War II. Greenwood itself started out as a Royal Air Force base during World War II as part of the British Commonwealth Air Training Program. Now moving inside, there's lots to see and there's lots to do on the inside of the artifact part of the building. And here are some of the badges of squadrons that have flown out of Greenwood. Keep in mind that all the artifacts that you see here and everything that's done has basically been done by volunteers who lovingly look after this museum and have presented it to the public as a part of preserving the past for the future. The museum does a great job of showing the history of not only Greenwood but all the squadrons that are associated with the Greenwood area and the British Commonwealth Air Training Program. And let's start out with 404 Squadron, the Buffalo, very prominent during the Cold War era, especially with the Argus, and still flying uh, Auroras out of Greenwood today. We have 405 Squadron, which is the Eagle, doing the same of anti-submarine warfare and surveillance. And we have 413 Squadron, the Tuskers, which is basically a search and rescue uh, squadron now and 415, the Swordfish Squadron, which had been decommissioned in Summerside PEI, but is now recommissioned in 2015, and take a look at who was overlooking the commissioning. Back to the artifacts, and you'll be absolutely amazed with the job that the volunteers and the members of the Greenwood Military Aviation Museum have done over the years in putting this together. And we'll just take a look at some of the items that are there. This Spitfire, by the way, is two-thirds scale. It is not the original. The ejection seat is something you never ever want to have to go through and go out of. This is some of the survival gear, by the way, that would go with you. And this just gives you an idea how quick it would be. Many of the items you see here, such as the, this torpedo, the ejection seat, the sonar boys, these are all part of the flight education program that is put on by the volunteers at the Greenwood Military Aviation Museum. Students from surrounding schools can come in and learn about engines, especially the Merlin engine, which is one of the most important engines during World War II, the Argus engine, what it was like, and many other aspects, including with the, uh, the variable pitch propellers. There is a large Argus display, as the Argus was very instrumental at CFB Greenwood as an anti-submarine and surveillance aircraft. A good demonstration of the flight engineer's position. And also the training module that can be found, the completed one, that has all the different components from the navigator, and you'll notice a sextant there, to the radio operators, radar operators, sonar boy operators. It gives you a good in-depth look at what it was like to fly in an Argus. And the role it played in the Cold War, especially the Cuban Missile Crisis. And although this is a painting, it does depict the work that they had to do. Another component of the museum is a commemorative gardens that can be found overlook in the museum itself. Dating back to the battle honors and those that were lost during World War II, 
Korean War and the Cold War. And in the middle of the gardens, an airman representing all those that left and many of them never coming back. Typical of the World War II era, a flight tower whereby they could watch to see how the action was going on many of the training sites. Now, let's look at the air park itself. And these aircraft are mostly stored outside, beginning with three as you move in. We have the Argus, the Labrador, and the T-33. And the Argus is a very big site as you come in very prominent and played a big part in Canadian maritime history. The Labrador helicopters, which have been long retired, search and rescue, and many a lost person had the good fortune of having one of these find them. T-33, dressed up in training colors as part of the training unit that used to be at Greenwood and one also sitting on a pedestal just across the street. Now let's just take a look at the air park as a whole, starting from our far left and working over to the right. You'll note it's a quite an array of aircraft. Now unfortunately they're all placed outside and I'll show you in a few moments the problems that you run into when they're all placed outside. Well, yes, and this building is VPI, and we'll get to that shortly. Now, one of the gems is the Lancaster bomber that has been redone over to look more as if it would be during World War II. And this has taken an awful lot of time and effort by the volunteers at the museum. And to just show you how much work was involved in this transformation, let's take a look at this. Up until a few years ago, this is what the Lancaster used to look like. And it has been transformed back into a World War II style bomber. Again, a lot of hours and a lot of effort by a lot of people. Gutless Gert. The next aircraft you'll note is the Neptune. And this Neptune at Greenwood is the only Neptune on display in Canada. And it is on loan from the United States Navy, but basically on permit display at Greenwood. Moving right along, next aircraft is an Arcturus, designed, built, and made to look like an Aurora that is still being flown by the Canadian forces. This aircraft was basically a training aircraft for Aurora crews. And what you see here, the Argus, the Lancaster, the Neptune, and the Aurora, all used for maritime surveillance. And now, another aircraft that has been done well and, re and refurbished by the volunteers, a DC-3. This is an earlier picture of the DC-3 just after it was rolled out with no other aircraft around it. As I always said, it takes a lot of volunteers to maintain and clean these aircraft up and put them on display so that others can see them and enjoy them. And speaking of restoration, the flying banana still being worked on, still being lovingly restored. It's a work in progress and it will continue to be so for the next couple of years to get it just the way the volunteers want it to be. So you know that they will do a fantastic job. Next is the CC-144 Challenger. Painted in colors as it was brought back from Ottawa in 
And yes, when you look at this picture, that is snow on the ground, but not in the summer. This picture shows the colors the Challenger jet used to be when it was posted in Greenwood. And moving over to Hercules on display, this is one of the new additions to the museum. And this is what it looked like in its flying days. Not outside is an Avro Anson that was built in Amherst, Nova Scotia. And Lloyd Graham and this author talking to students as part of the flight education program and showing the beginning restorations of a bowling broke, with, which hopefully will look like this when completed. Now, one of the major components of any museum is the restoration program. And this license plate says it all. And here we have some of the men and women who volunteer a lot of their time working with the equipment they have. And if they don't have the equipment, they make it. They're able to fabricate just about anything, regardless of what you're looking at, whether it's a simulator such as this, or in the case of the Lancaster, a rear turret that they designed from scratch. And working with all kinds of different wings for different aircraft. And one of the latest additions they have is an expediter. And that is one of the main focuses on the restoration crew right now. Whether it's the engines, doing repairs on the wings, and all the rest that have to be done, this expediter, you can imagine, probably in three to five years, will look almost brand new when it comes out. And that'll be thanks to all the volunteers that have spent countless thousands of hours putting it together. Cleaning up aircraft that have been brought to you is a big part, including the mold over the years that has got in there. And it's so important to get it out and to have fresh ventilated air going through. So hopefully this is going to look like this when it's over. And the last part of this museum is the international headquarters for VP International. which was started up by Harold Smale, along with Squadron 407, based in Comox, BC. And the Book of Remembrance for those who have passed. It truly is an international organization. And here are the four aircraft that basically from Canada formed over the years. So the future needs to know the past unless we never forget the sacrifices and dedication of those who serve and have served in the protection of our country. Thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll share that with others.